Now, if wolfing down the McRib doesn't satisfy your cravings to stuff your body full of pig pieces, medical science may still have you covered. I keep shaking my head. How can I be talking to somebody who has a pig's heart? I mean, it's remarkable. It's crazy, right? That's a doctor out of the University of Maryland School of Medicine who just helped carry out the transplant of a pig's heart into this dying man. I have been rejected by every human transplant institute on the East Coast. We are now down to my only real hope left is to go with the pig heart, the Zenon transplant. That 58-year-old man wasn't eligible for a traditional heart transplant due to other health problems. So this thing known as a Zeno transplant, or the transfer of organs from one species to another, seen here in all of its graphic glory, good morning, was performed at the end of September. As you may have guessed, this procedure, which involves a genetically modified pig's heart, is experimental. For decades, Zeno transplantation hasn't worked because the human immune system, which I have and you probably have, but not this guy because he runs on Linux or something, works to immediately destroy foreign animal tissue inside the body. So experimental teams are working with genetically modified pig organs like this heart to make it more human-like. That doesn't mean a pig is going to start loving you the way you hope your father would, but if these procedures work, they can give someone a second chance at life and effectively render the plot of that bad Will Smith movie moot. Last year, this same team carried out the world's first of these transplants into another man. He ended up surviving only two months, but doctors like this guy say they were nevertheless able to learn a lot from the groundbreaking procedure. It's a great attestation from the FDA also to give us permission for the second one. That, that shows us, that also you know, gives us confidence that what we did the first time and the, the effort to find out what went uh, wrong or you know, what we can improve was taken um, um, you know, uh, seriously by the FDA. So far, this procedure appears to be successful, and let's take a second to acknowledge what these people actually figured out how to do here. They took the thing inside the pig that keeps the pig alive, and they put it inside the person to keep the person alive. Do you see what I'm saying? Even that doctor from before who's part of this team is still impressed by what they pulled off. It's an amazing feeling, right? I mean, you know, it's an amazing feeling just to see this, this big hard work in a human and that person talking to you, right? So, so you know, nothing can beat that feeling. Uh, but at the same time, you know, we want this to, uh, you know, work for a longer period of time. Right. Like I said before, the first person to undergo this procedure passed away after two months. But in spite of the obvious risks, the guy who just got this pig heart remains cautiously optimistic. Family has been awesome. So I will fight tooth and nail for every breath I could take to stay with all of them longer. But realistically, this is still an early stage learning process. And I have to be ready to accept whatever outcome we end up at. And this isn't the only pig Xeno transplant that experts are working on either. Also in September, a team at NYU carried out the transplant of a pig kidney into the body of a brain dead man. And while the patient was already deceased, it marked a breakthrough as it was the longest period of time a transplanted pig kidney was able to function inside of a human body. It looks beautiful. It is uh, exactly the way normal kidneys look. The doctors, researchers, scientists, and support teams, let alone the patients involved in each of these procedures, showcase the culminated knowledge of years worth of study and hard work in order to improve the lives of the common man. I spent the bulk of my day Googling the McRib and watching stock footage of slaughterhouses.